Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Huge message to Kavanaugh accuser flying high in the sky over her house. As of today, it is being reported that Dr. Christine Blasey Ford will testify in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee on Wednesday or Thursday of next week. The details and arrangements are still vague, but Judge Kavanaugh is eager to clear his name. I'm eager to see this whole circus end so we can get on with the confirmation process. Pilot David Silver flew a plane on September 20 over the psychology professor's house with a giant banner attached that read, Thank you, Christine, we have your back. That was a huge message of support for Ford. It would seem there are a lot of women who were supporting her in all of this even though, in my opinion, her credibility is comparable to Swiss cheese. Ultraviolet, a women's rights group paid for the flight and the banner. The plane flew over gathered protesters who were marching to Ford's home as a show of support for her after she accused Supreme Court nominee Judge Brett Kavanaugh of sexual assault. There were approximately three dozen women in the protest group and a few men as well. This same group had already written a Dear Christine letter that many of them signed this week in support of the Palo Alto professor. The group linked arms as they marched in front of her home and chanted, Protect Christine! Protect Christine! The rally was cobbled together at the last moment and protesters were mostly comprised of Palo Alto mothers and neighbors showing solidarity for Christine Blasey Ford. Ford has also been celebrated and supported in the hashtag MeToo movement. She is also allegedly the victim of harassment and death threats. However, her local supporters are all in for her. We believe Christine, they chanted. Her story is our story. This particular rally was yet another effort to support Ford after she came forward in an article in the Washington Post to share her identity and her allegations against Kavanaugh. But what these people don't address is the fact that she can't recall the year it happened, where it happened, when it happened, who hosted the party, who was there, who brought her or who took her home. Frankly, I'm not buying it. Ford is claiming that sometime in the early 1980s, Kavanaugh was stumbling drunk when he and a friend forced her into a bedroom at a high school party, then groped her tried to strip off her clothes and put his hand over her mouth to muffle her screams. One of his friends, Mark Judge, interrupted the assault, she alleges, giving her the chance to flee. Kavanaugh is denying all of this and says it never happened. So is Mark Judge. Originally, Ford was insisting that before she would testify an FBI investigation had to be done. She changed that and then insisted that Kavanaugh testify first, not be in the room when she testifies that no attorneys be present and that Mark Judge be subpoenaed to testify. The Senate Judiciary Committee balked and said that they do not subpoena witnesses. They also pointed out that Kavanaugh should testify after Ford so he can answer charges against him and face his accuser. He also has a right to counsel in all this. Ford has still not said exactly what terms she agrees to for testifying next week. A candlelight vigil on a Palo Alto street corner is planned for Sunday night. Letters of support are being stuffed into her mailboxes at home and at her office, and a GoFundMe page has been set up to help pay Ford's legal bills. Ford's actual testimony next week is still very much in doubt. Fox News was told that Deborah Katz, one of the lawyers representing Ford, requested that a hearing be set for Thursday, a request the Republicans on the committee had initially rejected, offering Wednesday instead. Grassley did not immediately respond to the letter but a senior White House official told Fox News that it represented a request to continue negotiations about the terms on which she testifies without any firm commitment. It's a clever way to push off the vote Monday without committing to appear Wednesday, the official said. Senator Orrin Hatch, Republican Utah, who sits on the committee, tweeted that we are no closer to hearing from Dr. Ford than we were when her lawyers said Dr. Ford was willing to testify during their media tour six days ago. I am highly suspicious of this 11th-hour victim coming forward with an unsubstantiated claim from 36 years ago against Kavanaugh. It seems she has a number of supporters but I would say there are far more out there that have a problem with her story. I guess we will know more when and if she testifies. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click, like, and subscribe. Thank you.